Well, we are just a month away from one of the biggest welterweight fights of the century. But before they square off in the ring, Errol Spence Jr. and Manny Pacquiao meet face to face right here at our Fox Sports studios in Los Angeles. Errol Spence Jr. is undefeated and holds two welterweight straps. And he says he is going to send his rival into retirement. And what better way to prove that he is the truth than to wave one of the sports legends off into the sunset. Manny Pacquiao has been there, done that. The fighting senator from the Philippines, a once-in-a-lifetime great who has transcended the sport like few can. But will Father Time finally catch up with Pac-Man, or will he once again prove that age is nothing but a number? What makes them live is the fact that somebody took the time to put ink and graphics onto paper. It's the stories that are behind it, and that captures that moment. It, it is part of the story of boxing. What makes something timeless? Is it tail fins and chrome? An iconic cover? Or 35 millimeter film? Is it a color scheme, typeface, or the wear of distressed ink? Maybe it's beyond what our eyes can see. The care and effort that went into its creation the moment in time that it captures, and the story behind every detail, the characters, Boy, Pacquiao still has it. conflict, He's a star. and climax. Oh! Great action oh! in this fight. He's out. So this isn't just a fight. This is not simply side A versus side B. This is Shakespearean. This is cinema. This is artistry. This has all the makings to be timeless. This one will be one to be remembered, I can tell you that. The Fox Sports PBC press conference starts now. Well, we are live on Fox Inside Studio B at Fox Sports in Los Angeles. In just a few minutes' time, two generational talents will meet face to face for the first time since the fight was made as we begin the countdown for their hugely anticipated welterweight clash. Hello and a very warm welcome to the Fox Sports PBC press conference. I'm Ked Abdo, joined by a couple of guys who know all about big welterweight showdowns. You've got two time welterweight champ, Showtime Sean Porter, and former unified welterweight champ, Keith One Time Thurman. Uh, listen, Sean, we've been waiting for your next fight to be announced. We're still waiting. <laughs> when, when are we going to get an announcement? Uh, uh, I do the Porter Way podcast Tuesday. You might see something. So you wouldn't check rather that out. announce it on Fox rather than on the Porter Way podcast? I'm going to wait for my podcast to do that. Uh, Keith, you know that people <laughs> are talking about running it back, right? Are, are you into that? I'm definitely ready for a run back. We can do it anytime. Um, but we're just waiting on that finalization. I've been getting ready all summer. I wanted the summer dates. Uh, they just kept pushing it back, but I'm doing my job. I'm staying healthy and I'll be ready. I saw Keith today and I went in the back room and started shadow boxing. He looked good. <laughs> <laughs> he looked good. All right, good stuff. Uh, listen, next month we've got a 147 pound mega fight coming up for you, which you can watch live on pay per view or you can order it on the Fox Sports app, the legendary Manny Pacquiao is the only man to hold world titles in eight divisions. He has won a total of 12 world titles and was the lineal champion at five different weights. Just think about that for a second. His opponent, Errol Spence Jr., is making the second defense of his unified titles. He lands more punches per round than any active welterweight. He is unbeaten and is 6-0 against current and former champs. You've been in the ring with him, Sean. What makes him such a special fighter and what makes him dangerous to Manny Pacquiao? That's quite a stat, landing more punches in every round than anybody he's been in the ring with. You can't deny someone like that. And that's what makes Errol Spence Errol, is he's like, he has that I will not be denied type of mentality. He's aggressive, he's fast, he's sharp, he's got a good mind in, in, in boxing. And, and I think that that's what's made him successful to this point. I love Errol Spence's poise. I love his pressure. I love his power. Just so many different attributes that he brings to the ring that he does very well. And I believe that he's going to be favored. Even though he's the underdog, I favor him in this up and coming match. You see that shot of Errol kissing the, the Dallas Cowboys Kyle helmet there. There was no shot. There was no uh, Cleveland Browns helmet up there, I just think. Because we just started winning. They'll get, they'll get, a, they'll get one in here soon. Uh, I mean, listen, it, it feels like every single one of this current welterweight generation wanted the opportunity to fight Manny Pacquiao. You got it first right now. It's Errol's turn. How big will that pressure be to be the guy that gets the win over Manny Pacquiao? 
I mean, I felt the pressure. I believe there's always pressure when you take that new generation versus the old generation, you know, but Errol is ready for this. He's been wanting this. He wants to make a statement. He wants to send Manny Pacquiao into retirement. I thought it was my job. It looks like it's his job. We're one month away to really see what's going to happen. I like how you said it yesterday. You said our generation has to represent. I didn't get it done. Now it's Errol Spence's turn. I never think about it that way, but when you consider that our uh, generation has to represent and beat those guys like Pacquiao, um, Mayweather, who's, who's not here anymore. But when you have that opportunity, you got to root for your generation. So I'm, I'm rooting for Errol Smith Jr. now. All right, let's do it. You this sold me on that, man. I convinced you. <laughs> and I said it publicly. Okay, listen, there was a, a lack of unified welterweight title fights at the turn of the century. Things, though, have really heated up over the past decade at 147 pounds. Floyd Mayweather Jr. escaped with a majority decision win. That was over Marcos Maidana in 2014. A year later, he earned a unanimous win over Manny Pacquiao in the richest fight in boxing history. Then it was Keith Thurman getting the split win over Danny Garcia in 2017. That was followed by Errol Spence Jr. unifying against Sean Porter in a 2019 Fight of the Year candidate. And Spence uh, then defended his two belts last December in a unanimous decision over Danny Garcia. Um, let's talk about this then for a second a little bit. Do you feel like, uh, is, is he at a different level right now because he is unified champ? Do, is that what makes him the man in the division, even though there are other title holders out there? Do you, do you feel like the man when you're unified champ? I mean, not only is he unified, He's undefeated, and whoever else is out there undefeated and has a belt, they don't have belts. He is the guy right now in the welterweight division. He deserves that uh, spotlight. Errol Spence is the number one welterweight in the welterweight division today. Manny Pacquiao is the legend no matter what. We can't take away all of his stats. But Errol Spence, I think that he's one of the toughest that we have, and I believe that he's going to win this fight. And even with the belts that he has, I, I'm hearing that he gave away his position as the A side of this fight, uh, just giving respect to Manny Pacquiao for everything that he's done. But people understand belts. And when you got two around you on both sides, nobody can deny that. And it no does one... feel good. Yeah. I'll tell you that much. It does feel good. I mean, this is a pay-per-view fight, right? It's at the top guy in the division fighting an absolute legend, an icon in the sport. When you're fighting an event like this, of this magnitude, which you experienced yourself against Manny Pacquiao, how different does it feel? What, what kind of hit home with you? I mean, it's just great to just live this dream mm -hmm. of being world-class fighters, getting to that pay-per-view stage where people are willing to come out of their pocket and say, you are the entertainment that I look forward yes. to on Saturday night. I mean, there's no feeling better than that. But when you fight Manny Pacquiao with the <laughs> legacy behind him, with all the accomplishments, and then the whole country of the Philippines cheering for him, <laughs> it's just a different atmosphere. I felt it, and I'm pretty sure Errol Spence will feel it coming soon. Absolutely. I mean, Manny Pacquiao, he is special. He is the only four-time welterweight champ in boxing history. Um, let's just talk about him a little bit more because obviously, I, I mean, I know you respected him before you got in the ring, right? But how much did that grow after you fought him, Keith? When you fight anybody in this sport, you know, even a lot of these fighters, you see them trash talking. When they separate after a fight, they automatically respect one another more. And for me, I respected Manny just by the way he chose to fight. He fought like a real veteran. He made the smart moves. He threw Did the Did he do right anything punches. that surprised you? Um, being more defensive than I thought he would be. And I think a little bit of that had to do with his age of not being reckless. He, he's been reckless. He was, he was a reckless young fighter, and he really grew. He, he solved Mayweather's defense. Um, he respected my power by keeping his hands up at all times. The number one rule in boxing, protect yourself at all times. <laughs> I was very impressed to watch Manny Pacquiao round after round not let go and keep his hands up solid. Um, I think he's going to need to do that again if he doesn't want to uh, get destroyed because he's fighting another man who, just like myself, does have one-punch power. I got to imagine, I know that I did when we fought my level raise. I know when we, I'm, I'm assuming that when we fought your level raise, and the same thing when you got in the ring with Manny Pacquiao, whoever gets in the ring with Manny Pacquiao, your level just raises. You become a different athlete in that moment of greatness, trying to achieve that greatness. And so that's what we're going to see from Errol Smith Jr. in their fight is we're going to see him reach another level simply because the greatest is standing across from him. Mm -hmm. When it comes to what he's accomplished in his career, where do we start? I mean, Manny Pacquiao stands alone in a number of ways here. He's won titles from flyweight to super welterweight, eight divisions 
in all. He is the only four-time welterweight champion. He has held the lineal title in five of those divisions, and he has faced a who's who in the sport. And he won the WBA welterweight title two years ago to become the oldest 147-pound champion ever. It's a massive list of accolades. This is him, by the way, just uh, as he entered the building, walking down. I think that's the fifth floor. He spots the picture of Errol. He's ready for you, Errol. He's ready. Uh, <laughs> of that list of accolades, what stands out to you? Yeah, you gotta, you gotta push the pause button and really take a look at each and every one of them and pick one. Uh, they're all amazing accolades, things that some of us can only dream of. I would say maybe being the oldest champion ever. I think that that's something to be said, especially when you think about the Evers that came before Manny Pacquiao. I think being the oldest champion ever is an amazing feat. I mean, for me, it's, it's all the divisions he came up in. I mean, we have divisions for a reason, don't we? <laughs> is it, aren't you supposed to hit a ceiling yeah. eventually? Yeah. You know, so yeah. um, almost everything that he's ever done is, is just something that you can tip your hat to, salute, bow down to. Um, it's amazing. There's a reason why he has so many fans in the sport of boxing today and why we are all looking forward to this fight coming mm -hmm. next month. Amen. Very special. Listen, as the summer heats up, so does our robust schedule of fights as well. We've got a pair of Fox PBC fight nights beginning for you on July 31st, then a week later on August 7th as well. That is followed by the August 21st welterweight super fight between Errol Spence Jr. and Manny Pacquiao. Coming up next for you, Manny Pacquiao has been part of some of the richest fights in boxing history. Next month, he adds to his legendary pay-per-view run, fighting the most feared welterweight of his era. Though many don't believe it, Errol Spence Jr. is a fight that Pac-Man and his team have always wanted. Some way, I will say that we will fight him. We want to be the best, and I think maybe he can beat Errol Spence.
Welcome back to the Fox PBC press conference. Manny Pacquiao's rise to stardom began with Freddie Roach down the street in Hollywood at the Wildcard Boxing Club two decades ago. Together, they have authored one of the most successful fighter trainer runs ever, sometimes to the detriment of Freddie's ribcage. I gave the best up for a little while because I was tired of getting beat up. The reason why I got the best in the first place is so he could go full force like it was a fight. I don't want him holding back in this fight at all. And that's why I brought the best back. He's blasting me with a good power shot, and he's not holding back at all. I got beat up a little bit today, but it's okay. Well, Manny is synonymous with pay-per-view fights and no stranger with all that comes with it, like signing gloves in one of our meeting rooms here at Fox Sports. Uh, he takes to the stage next. Next month will, of course, also mark the 22nd time that he fights under the lights of Sin City. But will it be the last? It's a big question. Welcome back to the Fox Studio lot. It has been more than two years now since we saw Manny Pacquiao in the ring, a rare betting underdog then. It wasn't an easy night for Pac-Man, but he proved yet again that age is nothing but a number and Father Time isn't quite undefeated. All right, fans, here we go with a bout you've all been waiting for. Nice combination by Pacquiao. Some good shots landed by both guys. Another good right by Pacquiao. Oh, that was oh. Thurman! That was just a quick punch. Thurman's having his best round right now. Pacquiao's taking charge in this fight. Pacquiao again, the aggressor. More chances, Manny. For the winner, boxing's pride Pacquiao. of the Philippines. Well, Errol Spence Jr. is the unified welterweight champion and the PBC is well represented at welterweight as well with Ugas and James holding uh, separate versions of that WBA belt. Uh, listen, earlier on in the show, you kind of mentioned the fact that this is a, a meeting of two generations, right? Era versus era. And, and I'm interested in getting your thoughts on that as well because I think it's a really interesting subject. How important is it, do you think, for this current crop of welterweight talents to see one of your own better an icon like Manny Pacquiao? Well, it's not just about boxing, it's, it's all sports. We always see that the old, the old veteran, the guy who's been doing it the longest, getting overtaken by the young, ferocious, talented, up and coming fighters. And Errol Spence unifying in all of his accomplishments, even though he doesn't have the legacy of Manny Pacquiao, he does have the skill set that it takes to represent the new generation. And I believe that he's gonna walk away next month with a victory. I mean, he was 40 when he fought Keith. He'll be 42 now when he fights Errol, who's 31 <laughs> years old. Yeah. Uh, how does he do it? Why does he stay at the top for so long? You know, it's a part of history. Uh, we see the, I'll just call them the old heads, or, or the kings, uh, just come back and trying to re, uh, uh, reclaim that glory and, 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 and show who they really and, and always have been, show that they are who they've been. And I think that uh, to this point, he's been consistent in doing that. I don't see him going, uh, growing overnight and becoming that old man overnight, but you never know. It's an overnight process. I do expect uh, the best Manny Pacquiao that we've seen to this point. Yeah, it only takes one fight, right? It only takes one fight. Okay, listen, stay with us. We are just minutes away now from Pacquiao and Spence exchanging words ahead of their upcoming super fight. But this isn't actually the first time that the two have shared a ring. Take a look. And it'd be my honor to fight him next. Which, is that the fight you want next, Manny? We can get the fans a good fight.
Leonard Hearns, De La Hoya Trinidad, Mayweather Pacquiao, Sin City has played host to some of the welterweight division's biggest fights in just a month's time now. Errol Spence Jr. and Manny Pacquiao will look to add to the legacy of one of the sport's golden weight classes. The golden era, boxing's renaissance. Call it what you want, but the 80s are defined by a simple fact. The best fought the best. What's old is new again. Welterweight is back as boxing's glamour division. In his last fight, Errol Spence Jr. reminded us all of why he's been anointed the king of his weight class. And his path to supremacy now collides with one of the greatest pound-for-pound -pound fighters of all time, Manny freaking Pacquiao. 80s schmadies, the golden era has returned to the here and now. Which reminds me, let's keep it simple. This is the best fighting the best. Hey, welcome back. Uh, with you here at the Fox Sports desk, Kate Abdo, Showtime Sean Porter and Keith One Time Thurman. We are ready, we are ready to send things down to Hall of Famer Jimmy Lennon Jr. to get things started. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good afternoon to you and welcome. We are live on Fox as Fox Sports and Premier Boxing Champions presents the official press conference announcing one of the most highly anticipated fights in recent years. It is for the Unified Welterweight Championship of the World taking place at the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas, Saturday night, August 21st. It's live on Fox Sports pay-per-view. This event is brought to you by TGB Promotions, MP Promotions, and Man Down Promotions. Now, it is certain to be a sold-out event, and we are happy to announce that tickets are available now through tmobilearena.com and through axs.com as well. Joining us today, we have the two welterweight greats featured in the main event of the evening. First, let's take a look at one of boxing's elite stars of the sport. From Dallas, Texas, the undefeated WBC and IBF welterweight world champion, the truth, Errol Spence Jr. I am the best on the 47 fighter in the world. Truly one of the stars of boxing today, and pound for pound great. Ooh, oh, left by Spence with a spectacular knockout. There was back. That's wrong, a barrage of punches. That's a way to close the show. He's a star. The truth, Errol Spence Jr. And here he is. He'll be making his seventh world title appearance. The hard-hitting, reigning, and defending, undefeated, and unified welterweight champion of the world, the truth, Errol Spence Jr. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's take a look at a boxing idol and a distinguished senator proudly representing the Serengani province in the Philippines. He is the sport's only eight division world champion, Manny Pacman Pacquiao. The distinguished boxing senator. Nobody will intimidate me. I love the fight. He's still hungry, aggressive. This guy's a freak of nature. Pacquiao's really taking charge of this fight. Pacquiao still has it. He's still fast, he's still quick, he's still powerful. Boxing's legendary, Manny And now here he is, really needing no introduction the world over. He'll be making his 29th world title appearance, a legend of the sport, the future Hall of Famer, the one and only Manny Pac-Man Pacquiao.
There they are, ladies and gentlemen, facing off at this time. It's Pacquiao versus Spence Jr. for the Unified Welterweight Championship of the World. T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas, Saturday night, August 21st. And now, ladies and gentlemen, my pleasure to hand it over to Fox Sports reporter Heidi Endral. Thank you very much, Jimmy. Great to be here as we gear up for another PBC on Fox pay-per-view. A lot of intrigue around this one, and obviously the man on the, my right and the man on my left. You both can have a seat. It feels like uh, it's been a, a hot minute since we were all in the ring together. <laughs> Errol Spence had just defeated Mikey Garcia. You walked in, he waved you over, and you said, we'll give the fans a good fight. Obviously, a lot has transpired since that date, but my first question is for you, Manny. You know, I know a lot of offers had to have come through uh, between that time and now. Why have you decided to, to choose Errol Spence, a guy who's two, two belts, undefeated champion, in his prime? First, uh, I would like to explain my side about uh, picking uh, Errol Spence. There's a lot of... Uh, opportunity to, to pick a uh, um, not not easy fight but in a uh, much easier fight than compared to uh, Errol Spence but I decided to uh, pick Errol Spence because uh, I want to uh, give a good fight to the fans and I want a real fight I mean uh, I'm a fighter and boxing is my passion you know, Errol, I, I know that uh, after Manny Pacquiao fought Keith Thurman, you tweeted out an emoji with fingers crossed. A, a lot of adversity you have faced to get here to this point today, but what's it like to be so close to realizing that dream? I mean, it's great. It's a great opportunity, especially, you know, coming from my accident and um, fighting Danny Garcia, and then I get to fight with Manny Pacquiao, which a lot of guys is in the sweet stakes, and... You had a lot of different guys saying that they were going to fight him next. And, um, you know, to get that call and to say, and ask me, do I want to fight, you know, a legend like Manny Pacquiao? I said, of course. You know, why not? I didn't give it a second thought. When did you get that call? Um, I got a call a few months ago. <laughs> what impresses you? You say you want the real fight, Manny. What impresses you most about Errol Spence? Errol Spence is an aggressive fighter, and um, he's undefeated, young, and dedicated to, uh, to his, his career. I mean, uh, he's, this is not an easy opponent, and um, he's a kind of fighter that you never underestimated him. You, you cannot underestimate him. Yeah. Do you think that he is a more challenging opponent than Keith Thurman? It, it's hard to compare because... Uh, he's sitting uh, right over there. We got to be careful, yeah. right? <laughs> Keith Thurman is uh, our fight is um, you know, more... Uh, competitive, uh, more action. There's a lot of action in the ring. But this uh, opponent is different also because he's, he's a southpaw and um, aggressive fighter. So it's different to uh, Keith Thorman. He's, uh, he's right-handed. And um, I had, uh, it's been a long, it's been a while I didn't fight a, uh, fight a southpaw opponent. 13 years, I think, to be 13 exact. years, yeah, yeah. 13 years since you fought a southpaw. So that has to add... Uh, some unique challenges to this training camp. Uh, do you feel, I know you've gotten some southpaw sparring even though you've only been here a week. What what are you doing differently in this camp? And is there a little learning curve after being in there with those couple guys that you've been with so far? Yeah, um, definitely we have a, uh, we have to change our uh, our strategy compared to the last uh, previous fights that we prepared. We prepare. Um, this, this time around is uh, different because Southpaw and uh, it's different hip movement and uh, strategy and combination. Well, it's been 13 years for you. It's been six for you, uh, if I'm not mistaken. So what are you doing differently as you gear up six weeks out to prepare for a Southpaw? Um, nothing really different. I mean, it's not a lot of left-handers in, in boxing, so you don't really spar a lot of left-handers because I don't have them at gym. So what we did, we just got a lot of guys from around the country that are left-handed, that can fight left-handed style. I can't find anybody to the T that fights, you know, like Manny Pacquiao, of course. 
But you can find, you know, some guys who has the, you know, the kind of the tempo to mimic Manny Pacquiao, the pace of the fight and things like that. So that's what we found and that's what we're working with. Speaking of the tempo, I know Keith Thurman has said the thing that surprised him perhaps most was the speed of Manny Pacquiao. Do you uh, anticipate that same level of speed and what can you do to train for that? Um, I, I, can, I can definitely uh, anticipate it. You can see in his fights, you know, he's very explosive. He's very explosive and, um, you know, he's fast. So, um, you know, basically me and my coach, we got a game plan. We've been working on, of course, you know, we don't want to... Uh, say it right here but um you know we just got a game plan and uh, we've been working on it and um come october 21st you know you'll see you know floyd mayweather has said that uh while he wishes you both well he's picking Errol spence uh he says he's your, you're his people and he's going to reach out to you and give you some pointers has he reached out to you yet no nah, he hasn't reached out to me yet <laughs> <laughs> Has he ever reached out to you or spoke? Have you spoken to him uh, at all in terms of preparation for a fight? Um, definitely. You know, he's a guy that, you know, reaches out sometimes and, you know, talks to me and things like that. So, you know, he try to mentor me sometimes. So he definitely reach out. If he says he's going to reach out, he probably will. He probably will. What pointers could he give him? I, I think for me, um, sorry to interrupt. No, nope. <laughs> this is your press conference, Manny. I'm sorry, <laughs> sorry to interrupt that. You know, actually, um, um, Errols uh, don't need to have a uh, uh, advice from from Mayweather because I believe that Errols is better than uh, Mayweather and he's he's a uh, he's a fighter than Mayweather. So you think I think he will test Mayweather in how to to fight toe to toe. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think That's of that, Errol? That's quite a compliment <laughs> from an opponent. Yeah, it is a great compliment. <laughs> but like I said before, Manny Pacquiao the kind of guy who. You know, he'll woke you to sleep. You know, he'll give you a lot of compliments and, you know, gratitude and things like that. And then as soon as the bell ring, he'll be jumping all over you. So, <laughs> you know, I you know, I take it. I, I have in terms of uh, your accident, I know you came back, you show you wanted to prove that that was a just a, a bump in the road. Uh, you did that. Do you feel as though your chin has been tested since the accident? Um, definitely. Um, it's definitely been tested in the sparring, and I think, you know, it was tested in the Danny Garcia fight. So, um, you know, I still have a great chin. You know, of course, you know, I feel Manny Pacquiao probably would test it October 21st. I have to imagine that would be the plan early, to test his chin. Uh, I don't want to be uh, overconfident of that fight, it's, uh, in, in this fight, because, um, like I said, Errol Spence is his kind of opponent that you, you cannot you, you can you cannot never you cannot underestimate. I mean, he's uh, he's good, he's young, and his determ his de his determination and passion to this uh, sport is is always there. His dedication and how, the way he, he trained, I, I saw it in training. I know you say you don't want to be overconfident. Do you feel that you've ever been overconfident going into a fight? I never. <laughs> Um, I never be um, overconfident of, uh, in every fight that I had, but uh, I just want to make sure na that uh, w what I'm talking is uh, is real, is from com from the heart, not not you know uh, for impressing anybody for for my words. So. We've seen that from you in the past, and I appreciate that uh, and respect it. In terms of your training, you you arrived here one week ago. You told me backstage, uh, obviously a whirlwind flight to get here. Uh, and then you went straight to training. And we've heard uh, Freddie Roach say, you know, the, the way you're training, it's like you're training back for the Coda fight. He hasn't seen you do that. He's a little concerned, frankly, perhaps you could overtrain because of that. Why the urgency? Why, usually you take a day, from what I'm told. Why the urgency? Were you training back in the Philippines? I already uh, started uh, training uh, last week of May. Um, so when I get here, um, I, I continue my training, and but you know it's a good thing for me that I have a uh, off for more or for two years and don't have boxing because I've been in boxing how many years? I started boxing. Couple. <laughs> <laughs> I started boxing uh, since I was 12 years old, and that until now. So it's good for me that uh, I have a layoff uh, for two years. So 
when I get back to training, I, I, I feel like hang, uh, hungry to, uh, to focus on and, and um, dedicated to my training and uh, make sure that uh, I am 100% conditioned. That's my, my drive. Is there any concern about overtraining? Are you the kind of guy who can dial yourself back in, or do you rely on Freddie to do that for you? Well, I, I tell you that I tell you this, but um, it's different than before. That what I did before, because uh, when you are young, uh, when you push yourself in a day training, um, you can recover it at overnight. But when you um, like this age, um, it's you, you need your body a time to recover. Uh, you cannot push, push, push. Like when you push this day and tomorrow light train, not not too heavy, and then the next day you can you can push again, like that. But before when I was young, like every day pushing, pushing to the limit, like that. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, so, so you're not concerned about overtraining? No? no, I'm not concerned about that because I know how how I handle myself and how how I control myself and manage my tra discipline. The most important thing. Very good. Do you does that resonate with you, or given the, you know the age difference here, can you push, 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 and are you? Um, definitely, I can definitely push, and um, and I just feel like you know just because he's 42 by the turn 43, that doesn't mean nothing because you know he doesn't blow up in weight, like he don't get 20, 30 pounds out of, out of weight, or you know he's not doing outside things that you know don't distract him i feel like you know he's a boxer 24 7 you know all year round so i feel like you know that helps him also with his age and things like that so that's why i feel like you know he's basically gonna be that's why he's been the same man in pacquiao for all these years and decades because you know he's a guy to take care of his body and you know stay disciplined like he said so, and that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking forward to Manny Pacquiao. That's why I keep Thurman and Manny Pacquiao before that. So, um, that's why I'm going to train, and I'm going to train hard. And um, I don't believe, really believe in overtraining because I feel like, you know, your body going to go what you're adapted to. You know, my body's adapted to, you know, training hard and, you know, just staying focused and being 100% mentally in there and physically. So, you know, I feel like I can't overtrain. You mentioned mentally. Who do you think has the mental edge in this fight? Um, I don't know. I guess we had to see the first round. <laughs> what, do you, what do you think? Who do you think has the mental edge? Um, it's hard to say right now, but it depends. On, like, I, like I said, uh, in the first round, we will measure that. We can measure that in the first round. Most definitely. You, you, you speak of the first round. In the first round, you were able to drop an undefeated Keith Thurman. Do you think that you will be able to have that kind of success and, and get this guy to the canvas early? I'm not um, predicting that, uh, but um, as I said, uh, I, I, I'm doing my best to focus on in training and especially to focus my mind and my, and my body, my, my spirit, uh, of course, to, to win the fight. That's our goal. Both of us have a goal like that. Of course. So, you know, Errol, in speaking with your trainer, Derek James, uh, in, in advance of previous fights, you know, I know you guys really always try to look for tendencies. Specifically, he looks for tendencies. He had a hard time finding them against Mikey Garcia. Uh, have you noticed any tendencies? I have to imagine the challenge is uh, just as difficult against a guy like Manny Pacquiao. Um, definitely. I mean, he has a lot of tendencies. Of course, you're going to find some over his, you look know. that smirk. <laughs> <laughs> Over his career span, I mean, of yeah. course, you're going to find some tendencies, you know, and things like that. But, you know, and all in all, he's just a, a guy that's going to get out there and fight. You know, when he, when when it's time to buckle down, you know, he's a guy that's going to fight, you know, and that could be a pro and a con. Mm -hmm. But um, at the end of the day, you know, he's going to make it a fan-friendly, great fight. You know, Errol Spence, obviously known for... Uh, you know, the body, the vicious body work, the, the jab. How do you intend to, to stop that and negate those things in this fight, Manny? How do you, tend to, how do you anticipate being able to negate his jab and, and protect yourself from that vicious body shot? We have a, um, a couple uh, strategy and techniques that uh, we can apply in the fight. So, but I, will, I won't say that right sure. now. How, how would you rate Errol Spence in terms of uh, all the opponents you faced? And you faced a number of incredible ones over the years. Uh, how would you rate him as an opponent? Um, Is this the biggest challenge? 
one of the biggest uh, challenge in my career. I cannot say the biggest challenge because I have been uh, fighting a uh, um, best fighter in the world, the, like um, Keith Orman, De La Hoya, um, Miguel Cotto, a um, lot of those mm -hmm. fighters. So one, one, one of the best. Um, I can, I can rate his uh, this opponent. Well, if I'm not mistaken, you have beaten more champions and former champions than Earl Spence has in combined fights in his career. Do you think there's anything he can show you that you haven't already seen before? I, uh, you know, I've been in boxing more than uh, 25 years in my professional career. I think, uh, and I've been boxing 30 years, so. I think I already uh, uh, saw the, the different kinds of style and different kind of uh, uh, of uh, passion that I encounter in the ring, and um, this this kind of fight is uh, I, I always consider this uh, as uh, one of one of the top uh, fight. Well, just a fun fact: uh, when you fought your first pro fight, you were just four years old. <laughs> And when you won your first world title, he was eight. So uh, certainly the experience advantage in terms of years. Do you think at 42 years old, he has the power to knock you out? Uh, or finish you? No, I don't see myself, you know, ever getting knocked out. You know, there's just something I don't see. But, um, you know, we're definitely going to be cautious and, and mindful that he does have power. Because, I mean, he did knock down Keith Thurman and, and you know, he did hurt him with a boot with a body shot. So um, we're going to keep that in mind. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's not to think about getting knocked out or can he knock me out. You know, I don't think, you know, any fighter, you know, can knock me out. Do you think that uh, at this point, uh, six weeks out and, and with the southpaw sparring, that you can finish him? Um, you know, definitely, I definitely have the ability to. I definitely have the ability to finish him. So, um, you know, well, for me, it's to win the fight. It's to stay focused, win the fight. I feel like when you go out there and you rush it and you try to go for the knockout, I feel like, from my experience, even in the amateurs, you either look sloppy or, you know, something goes wrong and you look like you're trying too hard. So for me, it's to, you know, just, you know, go at my fight, you know, go at my pace. And uh, if the knockout comes, go for it. But if it don't, you know, go for the victory. All right. Well, I know there's certainly a lot of intrigue, and we could continue this conversation, and we will continue this conversation uh, again soon. But I want to leave this opportunity for both of you to do some closing remarks. So I'll start with you, Errol. Closing thoughts here. My closing thought is it's going to be a great fight, entertaining fight. Uh, Manny Pacquiao, he's going to bring it like he always do. Show a lot of heart and dedication, and um, it's going to be an entertaining fight for the fans, and I'm definitely going to come with the victory if it's a stoppage or a win. Very well. Mr. Manny Pacquiao. Yes, uh, I would like to um, invite all the fans to watch this fight, this uh, one-of-a-kind fight and uh, prestigious fight. Um, it's going to be a good, a good fight, more action in the ring, um, as we uh, expected. Uh, and uh, thank you to all your support. Um, I'm so thankful to God for, uh, you know, 20 years uh, fighting in, in here in the States. Uh, um, until now, I'm still fighting uh, to uh, w one of the best uh, fighters in, in, in the world. So I'm so thankful to God and thankful to all the fans and media who are always supporting us here um, in boxing. Uh, not only me, but to all the, the uh, boxing uh, industry. Thank you so much for all your support. And salamat sa lahat ng mga Pilipino na lagi nakasuporta sa akin. And please watch this fight against uh, Errol Spence is coming uh, uh, 20, August 21. Kiwinga uh, Abela Gran Pelea entre mi Manny Pacquiao ke Errol Spence. Muchas gracias. All right, well, you mentioned the media. We'll allow you guys, thank you both very much. We'll allow you guys to face off for them uh, as they do their scrum. Uh, lots of intrigue, as I mentioned off the top. August 21st, T-Mobile Arena, Las Vegas, Nevada. You're not going to want to miss it. For more on this epic super fight, we'll send it back to Kate Abdo. Thank you very much, Heidi. Uh, so, I mean, we just heard Manny Pacquiao bust out three languages there. Have you, have you got anything for us? <laughs>
That was pretty impressive, wasn't it? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, I mean, the respect that Errol Spence Jr. has for Manny Pacquiao is evident, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that we could say that in the fight against you, the fight against Danny Garcia, he didn't show the same respect. Are you surprised by how respectful he's been? You know what, I'm not. Um, uh, I think that he knows who he's getting in the ring with, and I think that that overrides the personality, I think, or persona that he normally would display. I think him understanding that this is a GOAT, I'm getting in the ring with a GOAT, I'm going to appreciate this moment, I'm taking it, but I think that that's what the respect that you're seeing from him is. There was a question there from Heidi about the car crash and, and how Errol feels since then, whether he's he's taken, has he had his chin tested since the car crash? Do you feel like we can put the car crash to bed now? Is it time to put that behind us with the Danny Garcia performance? I mean, the Danny Garcia performance, him himself, he said he was 70%. Um, we did not see Danny land punches. Danny is a lot slower. Errol makes a lot of smart decisions in the ring. The question, to, to test the chin, you got to hit the chin. You want to <laughs> test the chin, you got to hit the chin. So there are boxing people, we're a little picky like that. Some people yeah. still want to see what happens if Errol Spence gets yeah. hit come this 21st. But for me, and like Errol said, he knows he's tough. He knows he's taken big punches before. He says he doesn't see anybody ever being able to knock him out. I believe a knockout punch is a knockout punch, but that kind of confidence, I love to hear that kind of confidence in a fighter. Uh, Manny Pacquiao wouldn't say that Errol Spence would be his toughest opponent, right? But do you think, given the age, given the time that he's been out the ring, would this yeah. be his greatest achievement, he, despite all the names that he has on his resume? <laughs> I mean, those names, that he's got Margarito, he's got Cotto, he's got De La Hoya, uh, Ricky Hatton, and the list goes on. Was, I was watching, I'm looking, I'm like, does... Errol Smith Jr. compared to those guys. I'm not, I'm not positive that he doesn't, but I'm not positive that he does. I think that of the era of right now, yes, he is the, the Kodo of right now. He is the Ricky Hatton right now and the other names that I've mentioned of right now. He is the toughest, would it be the toughest to date? Uh, August 21st, I think giving that man he is 42, it will be the toughest fight that he's had at 42. <laughs> you won't get out of 42. What? Um, uh, they were asked about mental edge as well, weren't they? You've been in a fight with Mackie, Manny Pacquiao. Do you think that the fact that he has been through this process so many times, he has headlined so many pay per view fights, does that give him the mental edge over an His Aerosmith comfort Junior? level in the ring is um, tremendous. Mm -hmm. What? Another thing is all this press, I felt a shift in Pacquiao's demeanor the week of the fight. Mm. One of those stare downs the week of the fight, I felt the real Manny Pacquiao. And that was the day I knew this is gonna be a fight. Regardless of everything else, anything he said before or nothing, I knew he showed up. And I just hope that same Manny Pacquiao shows up coming was, uh, on the Was he smiling at you during that stare down? Because that's um, what he does, right? He smiles. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was before the smile, there was, the words he just said on stage was he needs to concentrate, keep to his game plan, and align his spirit. Manny Pacquiao is a very spiritual person. When he stays truly focused and he aligns himself, he believes that he can accomplish anything, and that's why he's taking this challenge today. All right, listen, we're getting close. Manny Pacquiao and Errol Spence Jr. just a month away now from the generational showdown. Coming up, we're going to break this fight down even further for you. It is a beautiful day, by the way, here in Los Angeles for a press conference. But on fight nights, will Errol Spence Jr. be able to weather the storm of Manny Pacquiao's quick hands? Stick with us. The Fox PBC press conference is going to be right back. We are.
Well, we were just two weeks away from a heavyweight trilogy fight between Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder, but we are all going to have to wait a little bit longer, unfortunately. The fight has reportedly been postponed to October, delaying the Bronze Bombers' shot at revenge by an extra couple of months. Wilder and Fury, remember, of course, they fought to a draw in the first matchup, and the Gypsy King then won their second by TKO. Massive disappointment on that front. But let's focus back on the fight that is happening on August 21st, Manny Pacquiao against Errol Spence. If Errol Spence, uh, oh, sorry, I should say, if Manny Pacquiao gets the win in this fight against Errol Spence ask Jr., him. Uh, ask him, <laughs> all right, fine, does it make him the greatest of his era? Because I think there's a reasonable argument that it would make his resume better than Floyd's. Would you agree with that? I think his resume would be better than Floyd's. I think a whole lot of people will agree on you and want to make him the greatest ever. But Floyd did beat Manny Pacquiao. I just believe that Pacquiao will be arguably the best welterweight in the welterweight history. And just being arguably that, I mean, isn't it enough? And the other side, Misha. yeah, real quick. The other side of that is it said that Manny, that uh, Floyd Mayweather wouldn't come back and fight three fighters: myself, Keith Thurman, or uh, Errol Spence Jr. And with that being said, if Manny were to beat him. Say I'm all in for that. All right. Uh, listen, we do appreciate you joining us for the Manny Pacquiao Errol Spence Jr. press conference. We are counting down the days now to August 21st for a massive welterweight showdown. It is the biggest fight on the calendar for the rest of the year as two generations will collide. Make sure you join us in a few weeks as well for the return of PBC on Fox on July 31st. From Sean Keith and myself, have a good one. See you soon. Surprise pizza meets heartburn you didn't expect. New Zantac 360 degrees.